Hey everyone, so this is a short video to explain the concept of interpolation, which we've done a number of times in uh, Chem 141, but people are still struggling with it on the pre-lab for the Duma experiment. So, first a definition. Um, interpolation is a mathematical process where we can find the value of, of a trend between two points. So, for example, if, if I have, say... I don't know, a graph of time, um, versus, uh, the amount of money some stock has, has made. Um, let's pretend like the market is going well, so the stock has been increasing in a relatively straight line. If I know, if I know the, the, the value of the data at one point and at another point, I can assume that the, the change between those two is going to be linear because that seems to be the pattern here. Um, and so effectively I can kind of use the slope of this line, which is the change in the change in the, the y, or you can think of that as like the rise. Whoops, my line went too far. The rise. Um, so the change in the y divided by the change in the run, which is the change in time in this case. So you can use, um, you can kind of use the slope of this line to anticipate the value for anything in between these two data points. So say if I want to know the exact value on a specific day, um, what I can do is kind of multiply the difference between here and here by the slope and add it, in this case, to our starting value. So, Here's an example. Um, you have a pediatric patient with two different weights, one at three days and one at 40 days, and you need to know their exact weight um, that they had at 30 days old. So we could draw a graph of, of this relationship. If you imagine um, age in days on the x-axis and the weight on the y-axis, since we have two data points, it has to be a line. Um, so the first... The first data point is at three days, and the second will be at 40, and so it's going to look like that, and the, the second data is, hmm, so this will be five kilograms, so we would plot it somewhere like about there, and so you would create a trend line from this that should be straight. It's an iPad, so you can't do a ruler on it, but you get the idea. If if what I want to know is actually the weight of the child at 30 days, that would be somewhere maybe around this area, um, then what I can do is interpolate. So again, we say it's the change in y divided by the change in x to get the slope. And then once I have the slope, I need to multiply it by the difference between these two points. And then I need to add it, because our trend is increasing, so I'm going to add it to our starting position. So you can kind of think of interpolation as a series of three steps. Um, I usually like to sketch the graph because it helps me figure out how the trend looks, whether it's a positive correlation or a negative one. Uh, in, in both cases of the examples I've shown you today, they're both positive because they they go up. Um, and that's important because if it was a negative correlation, you, you don't add them at the end, you subtract them. Okay, so the first step is, is to find a slope. And that's just going to be the difference in, you know, your two measurements. So in the case of um, the age of the toddler, and the weight, we put weight on the y-axis, so we'll subtract those two first. So it would be the change in the y. So the change in the weight is 4.21 minus 3.35. This is kilograms. And then the change in the x-axis is the change in age, so that's 40 minus 30. I always want to make sure to... Not 40 minus 30, 40 minus 3. 
I want to make sure to get these aligned properly. So this is one data set and this is the second data set. Okay, so it's important that those are subtracted in the same kind of order in both cases. Okay, so if we subtract these two, then we get 0.86 kilograms divided by 37 days. Um, so that ends up being 0 0.02, let's see, we've got two sig figs, so I'm going to write one more, three kilograms are, are gained per day. Um, so then the second step comes along, and what we're going to do here is multiply the difference between the data we have and the measurement that we want by the slope. So we wanted 30 days, and um, our initial measurement was 3. So the difference between 30 and 3 is 27 days. So what we're going to do is take 0 0.023 kilograms per day. That's a rate, so it's a fraction. So I can use dimensional analysis to um, figure out how many kilograms should have been gained, assuming a linear relationship, over the course of that 27 days. And so what you get is that the child should have gained about 0.63 kilograms over that period. Now, we can't stop here because, of course, we know the child doesn't weigh 0.63 kilograms. We know that it started off with a weight of 3.35, so we have to add this value to this because it's a positive correlation. The trend was showing an increase over time. So the third step in this case for a positive correlation, meaning that the, the graph looks like this, you're going to add the answer from number two to your initial value. If we had a negative correlation, then um, then you would actually be subtracting it. So it's it's a graph that looks kind of the opposite of this one. Okay, like that. Um, if you got that, then you would subtract your answer from number two from the initial value. You can always double check yourself by comparing the initial and final numbers. So for example, if, if I took 3.35 and I subtracted it, um, it would be less than the child initially weighed, which, which would put the number down here somewhere. So that doesn't make any sense. We can only interpolate between the two data points. So if I get something below the initial data point, then that must be wrong. Or conversely, if, if I get something above it, then it must be wrong. Okay, so in this case, let's see here, we had 0.63 kilograms, and so um, we're going to take the initial weight of the kid and add 0 0.63 kilograms. And this gives us um, the interpolated value, which is essentially a rough estimate because, of course, we're making a lot of assumptions. You have two data points, so they have to be linear, and there's no other kind of trend you can get with that. Um, but it works for a lot of different scientific data, so this is why we learn it. So our final weight at day 30 should be about 3.98 kilograms. Okay, so let's work on a negative interpolation one. So this is a, a negative trend. Um, density tends to be um, a negative slope because... If you think about density as equal mass divided by volume, volume depends on temperature. So as temperature increases, um, so does volume. And volume's in the denominator here. So if the denominator of a number increases, then the answer gets smaller. Okay, so that means um, if we took two water densities, say I have the density of water at um, 100 degrees Celsius, which is point, let's see here, 95865. And this is in units of grams per milliliter. And I also have 
the density at, say, I don't know, 70 degrees Celsius, which is 0 0.99802. Okay, so I like to sketch my uh, data before I really try to interpolate anything so I know whether my slope should be positive or negative. So if we have 70 degrees and 100 degrees, and then we have like, hmm, let's say 0.95 is here and 1 is here. Um, so my data would be, let's see, 70 is 0.9982, so that's close to 1, so it's going to be this one, and 100 is 0.958, so it's a little bit more than 0.95. So that means that our data has a negative trend. Okay, so that means at the last step I'm going to subtract it. Okay, so um, let's say that I wanted to know the density of water at... 82 degrees. Here's how I would do it. Okay, so if I want to know the density of 82 degrees, I'm going to subtract, so it's, again, it's delta y over delta x. Um, in case you were wondering, it doesn't actually matter which one you put on the x or the y axis, um, but I know that I'm trying to get to an odd temperature, so I tend to make that the x axis. Um, it just makes the conversion factor make more sense. So my y values here are going to be, oh, let's see, I'm going to do the absolute value of them um, because it's going to simplify my math. You don't have to. If you want to keep it as a negative slope, you can, um, but I think most people probably think in positive numbers a little bit more easily. So we're going to go the absolute value of 95865 minus 0 0.99802 divided by 100. So this 100 degrees and 9 0.95865 need to stay sort of together. This is the data point, so I want to make sure that they match up. And so if you don't do the absolute value thing, then at the last step you would just add the negative, which is the same as subtracting. So you can think of it however, however you like. Um, so the slope here is negative 0 0.00131. And that's going to have units of grams per milliliter per degree. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to take that number and multiply it by the difference between my initial point 70 and my final 82. So that's a difference of 12 degrees. And that gives me the total change um, in the density over the from, from 70 to 82. So we've canceled here, we've canceled the degrees Celsius um, oops, just the unit, not the number, like that. Um, so the change in, de in density, and so I'm going to start with my density at 70 degrees, which was 0 0.99802, and subtract the change because it's a negative correlation. You can tell that because the slope is negative. And so... Our answer here is going to be 0 0.98232 grams per milliliter. Now I got kind of lazy about my sig figs because my temperatures weren't very precise, but in the in the actual table, it has much higher precision. So it would be like 70.00, so you get four sig figs usually, um, which would mean I would report this as 0.9823. Okay, so I just want to double check. 0.9823 would be less than 99802. It would be about here or so. Well, actually, yeah, there we go. Um, so that's within the expected range.